Greetings! My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very P. And we're getting the band back together. So, yeah. I don't actually know where, uh, know exactly where each of them are. But what I do, what I do know is that it didn't actually save me selling that villain ink. Anyways, but what I do know is that, or what I suspect is that almost all of them are going to wind up being in these various undersea ports. It seemed like the way things were going to go. Uh, I do know that one of them is in Port Canelian, though. All right. So, we're going to be doing, what I'm planning on doing is like doing like, you know, getting the, doing one person per video or something like that. <laughs> so, I don't actually, doing a whole theme naming, uh, I don't actually know wh which one I'm going after today, but you probably do, because I probably named the video something like, the first of the seven, uh, up Sort of thing. Okay, I. I do have a screenshot actually. Hang on. Let me check it. Which one is the closest? Oh, there's Hideaway. I know someone's over in Hideaway. Oh, ow. That did not look like it was a thing I could run into. Feels weird to be going through the black so quickly. Oh yeah, there's also this stuff to do. <laughs> with, that, with the pirate poet. Listening to art. At dinner, the pirate poet presents her new work, Baptism of Glass, about her first days at Z after years of servitude. By demand, she follows it with shorter works and reforged, a cry for broken chains. In Polydream, we are given our words. We are not allowed to hope they will be kind. In London, I was free to write my own, and in that moment, I was free. One day, others of my homeland will read them, and they too will learn. One day, my king's dreams must end. Eventually, she finishes the probe of her art, and earns thunderous applause for it. Not only from the claymen or her crew, but also yours along with yourself, too. The pirate poet's face seems impassive, and that you're able to see the joy in her eyes at the success of her newly finished piece of poetry. It brings a smile to your face, which unfortunately in return gains you a wink from the cooking devil lips. <laughs> yes. I'm certain, uh, Zailers can, 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 ver can very much empathize uh, with calls for freedom or whatever. Considering the shit they have to put up with. Every ship is a prison ship, if you think about it. All right, hideaway. On the uh, on the back of a gigantic beast lives exiles from every corner of the Nath. Here gather the traitors, heretics, artists, fools, and the too honest. Despite possessing a range of radically different ideologies, these outcasts live pe together peacefully. All right, explore the city, record the habits of those that dwell within. A city of strict custom. Most hideaway dwellers toil to strengthen their city against the Z's crushing weight. Those that don't instead prepare for the night's festival, and all without a word spoken aloud. If they need to communicate, the people of hideaway rely on a strict system of acutely formal gestures. I wonder why that is. Is this whole? I don't know. All right. Excuse me. Where is the? Inform the sprightly visionary that the Seven against Nidar have returned. You recognize him from Miriam's bone statue. He is Eric, the Seven's captain. 
He grins wickedly and squeezes your arm. Then he begins scribbling in his notebook. I've been waiting, he writes. Tell Miriam I've not been idle. Help me and the Seven will have a potent weapon against Nidar. Help you? Help you do what? Oh, I forgot about this. Lost co Silver is color, lost causes. Right, I picked up my little scrim chanter. The man of scholar surveys a miserable crowd with open disdain. Yes, these should suffice. Destined for frustration. The last you see of the scholar, he is trying to get an artist to answer his questions and shaking in frustration. A crowd seems to be closing around him. That's ominous. Alright, aid the sprightly vision aid. Oh good, I don't need a searing enigma for this. <laughs> A small man with liver spots on his head and a wispy and wispy white hairs on his chin is struggling to roll a wheel of heavy cabling. Together you roll the wheel through hideaway. You pass women lugging blow torches and bags of cement, and men trying to smile as they put on diving suits. Eventually you pass through an iron gate to a workroom. At the room's center is a deep pit. A large electrical alternator looms against the back wall. The visionary plugs the cable into the alternator, and slowly feeds the rest down into the pit. When finished, he writes a short message in his notebook, chained to the wrist. Thank you. Usual helps working on faulty line. May need you in future. As he hands you the note, he looks up, revealing his neck. It's one huge scar. He's industrious for one so old. He's always running around the city, aiding his killmen or repairing electrical faults. Interesting. He said something about a powerful weapon, so I don't think he's just doing this out of the goodness of his own heart. Well, I mean, technically, if you think about it, that's sort of why we're. Do if he's fl if he's doing this for the sake of this ambition, you know, <laughs> we're giving immortality to all. Certainly, the pretty goodness, pretty goodness. What does that even mean? <laughs> Alright, he passes the toolbox to one of his workers and rushes over to you. He writes in his notebook, it writes in the notebook chained to his wrist. Fire his engines with fuel. The visionary passes you a scrap from his notebook. Alternator engines near dead. Need fuel. Provide? Why not? Oh wow, seven fuel for ten dark drop coffee beans. I despise coffee, but that's still a good deal. Dark Drop Coffee Beans can be traded for money, and money can be exchanged for goods and services. <laughs> My men will transfer it. Lunch? His uh, room is spacious, if rather bare. A filament bulb shines pleasantly within a pink paper lantern. Notice that his neck is very cleverly hidden so they don't have to make a sp uh, particular model for him. <laughs> his plaster walls are cracking. A hand-drawn portrait of a dark woman hangs above his bed. The visionary clears maps of hideaway from his table and prepares coffee. As he passes your brew, bellows of pain engulf the room, and all hideaway trembles for a moment as the beast below rises. But the visionary doesn't spill a drop of the coffee. Once things settle, he writes a note. Forgive Temtum. He hurts now slash then. Coffee? And please, call me Eric. Fixing a fault. You need terror no more than 25. That's a bit awkward. Uh, how can I reduce terror? Oh, hang on. Doesn't the, uh, this guy have a way? Damn, I don't have the resources. What do I not have? Oh, honey. Damn. Can I get honey here? I don't think so. Uh, maybe if I join a festival? Ooh, where do they store their goods? Here we go. Hmm. Damnation. I can sell a casket of sapphires for two meters all. That's a good deal, I think. But oh, I can get strange catches pretty cheaply. Uh, where, where can I reduce terror nearby? I don't know. Huh. This is awkward. Oh, wait. King Eater's Castle. I can do uh, reduce a King Eater's Castle. Actually. No, wait. Uh, to reduce that king's castle, it needs to be above 50, and it only reduces it by 25. And I. I mean, maybe I could get away with that, but I have to be. I have to play some silly buggers. Damnation. Some days you just can't get rid of terror. 
Ah, yes, okay, I can get, I can reduce terror at the Chillinate, good. So, it might cost me some crew, but I wanted, uh, I've been meaning to downsize anyways. Eater of these nuts. Grab another figure pad. There we go, lost 15 terror, and 30 echoes, and one crew. All good things. Oh, I think I didn't lose the second crew, that's interesting. Not necessarily in a good way. What the heck is this? I landed on top of a crab carcass. The corpse of a vast crab is sunken into the sea floor. Its shell is a vivid saffron. The water around it is luminescent. It was like and unlike others of its species. You don a diving suit and approach the shining shell. Gold light washes over you like the tide on a sunlit beach. Your hands are illuminated in pale fire. Oh, now I get uh, some terror reduction. Oh, hi. What the fuck is that? Oh, and that's a light. That can reduce- that'll reduce your fragments to reduce your terror. Which I don't need, because I've got very little terror. <laughs> they just- Ooh, What's this? What the fuck is that? Oh, Lornis float. These guys are weird. They actually have significantly worse loot. You can either get like a flute core, or uh, like a flute core without even getting the plus three secrets, or like two extraordinary implications. I'll get the implications. Yeah, whatever. I don't like Lornist flukes, they're just daft. Just Lorne flukes, but worse. I guess the sort of implications are good for grinding, uh, doing enigmas, because you can trade them over in Irem, I think. Probably Irem. Alright, I've come back with just 10 terror. Here we go. Eric passes you a scout for the notebook. I need particularly steady hands to repair cabling. Assist. In the center of Hideaway is a small building with decorative paper windows. Lock behind an iron gate nobody dares touch. Eric unlocks it, and then leads you inside. In the center of the room is a raised brass panel and a chair. The panel is covered in switches and gauges. Central control of hideaway. Requires rerouting. I'll point the what where. He hands you a pair of tweezers and unscrews the back of the panel, exposing a mess of wire. The operation itself is simple, if slow, but the results are immediate. <clears throat> 
The lights outside flicker before shining brighter. Eric flips a switch. The ground shakes and you're thrown left. He flips another. You're thrown right. Eric beams as you, as he helps you steady yourself and pats you on the back. Sorry for that. All's well now. You've done a great service. Eternal thanks. Save Eric's, Eric's uh, essential control board. Nice. Now what? I guess... Oh right, the implied investigator. That guy with a, uh, who I... Sud oh, I suddenly threatened to eat because he was being a prick. Alright, I'll drop him off. The implied investigator grins as he disembarks. Never a good sign. As soon as he's exited your ship, he spots a small, ancient man, the sprightly visionary, Arik. The investigator rushes over to him and shakes his hand while unleashing a barrage of questions. What's your name? Reason for exile? How's the food? He, uh, the visionary writes a message in the notebook, change with wrist. He presents it to you both. Welcome. Sorry. Must run. You need to register yourself. Go straight ahead. A advice. No questions. Befriend Tum uh, Tum Tum. Good day. Alright. Implied investigator ignores the patterns of resting and waking established on Hideaway. He never seems to sleep. At all hours, he can be found asking questions or studying the city. Now, the question is, does he actually not sleep, or does he just have a bizarre sleep schedule? <laughs> Who can say? Let's see. The water is between. Seven diving suits take up the investigator's room. We're exploring the space between Temtom and its ba and its city shell, but we'll need another five divers. All right. Nice. The investigator leads you to the depths of Hideaway. Did you know there's an enterprise to construct kelp farms on the outside of Temtom's cheeks? We'll use their hatch to study the shells inside. One after another, you splash into the dark. With your light, you can see the flesh of the beast beneath you. It is bruised, bloodied, in some places. In others, it's mere feet from the shell. The investigator points ahead to a thick cable hanging down from above. As it comes more clearly into view, it sparks. The charge results in a convulsing of Temtum's flesh. You return to the city as swiftly as you can, but several of your crew were caught by Temtum's shifting body and crushed between his sh shell and his flesh. As soon as you're back in hideaway, the investigator strips out of his diving suit and flees. Al peculiar. All right, nice crew downsizing. Let's see. The implied investigator he never seems to rest. Whatever the hour, he can normally be found asking questions or studying the city. Today, however, he's withdrawn to his room and is unduly quiet. What is he up to? Miserable realizations. That's what he's up to. The investigator is curled on his bed, but sits when he notices you. I need something to help me relax, clear my head, anything. I'll try anything. Well, I got this opium. Oh. <laughs> away is doomed. It'll crack or be left on the Z floor, you magnificent bastard, and I'm the only one who knows. And so it goes, and so it goes. His eyes are bleary, red. Temtum, the beast is growing. Should have already shed its shell, but I guess it's willing itself to hold on. It can't beat biology, though, can it? Can it? Well, I don't know about that. This is the Nea. It, this place is full of people that have beaten biology. People and creatures. I don't see why <laughs> you're saying you seem to think that this one can't. It's going to outgrow a hideaway. Soon. He had dragged himself from the bed. Everyone here needs to know. They need to leave. I'll comply on my notes. Then we must tell them. Please, you magnificent bastard. They won't listen to me. They dislike me. But if you said something... I don't even... I'm not even certain that you're right. I don't... Why are you even certain you're right, actually? You do more research, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Verify your conclusions. Otherwise, you're just a... Another fucking doomsayer. <laughs> oh god, the war for hearts and minds. You don't even... I don't even have a dog in this fight. I don't even... I'm not even convinced either way. Why would I be willing to wear, wage a heart, four hearts for mine? Oh, here we go. Speech of the sprightly visionary. Do you have anything to clear this up? He's waving to you from a brightly lit alleyway. A request. 
The bright, uh, the sprightly visionary shows you a page of the notebook chained to his wrist. He has written a request for you. The investigator threatens to destroy Hideaway and everything you and I have worked towards. He must be killed. That seems a bit extreme. <laughs> Not that I mind killing him. I don't like him. But uh, it does feel uh, a bit excessive. Why are you so... Why are you so keen on this? Anyways, why, and why can't I ask questions before making a decision? Okay. But I'm going to politely decline. The, uh, the ancient man can't kill the investigator, and he can't trust anyone else in hideaway to aid him. If you refuse to commit this murder, the investigator will be safe. Probably. Well, relatively safe. It's the Nea, not to mention the Unterzi, and not to mention the Unter Unterzi, but yeah. I'm not going to murder this guy just just because he's an idiot. The bow of refusal. The right hand is placed over the heart. The fingers of the left hide the bottom lip. The head is tilted forward. You perform this impeccably. Arik's smile is entrenched. He takes your hands and kisses both the only acceptable response to a refusal. It indicates that it is happily accepted, and that the receiver completely understands. He nearly crushes your fingers, but this does not change the meaning of his gesture. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, crap. And our it's all bit of a trench. I'm gonna have to start a war for hearts and minds, aren't I? The Implied Investigator will hold his own festival soon. He plans on revealing the doom nature of Hideaway then, using informative pyrotechnic display. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> uh... I mean, you do realize it's the unter unter z Christ. Even open flame is probably a dan uh, big danger. Am I, really, am I really gonna have to choose between going along with this nonsense and murdering the guy? I guess I'll, con I'll see where this goes then. Even if I think he's a daft fool and I don't support his, uh, his incoherent panic, just I mean, incoherent panic based on like one data point. Alright. I'll just back up my save, and if this goes poorly, I can just revert. Alright then. The, uh, begin the war for hearts and minds. Why not? Because this is what we're doing today. On the night of the festival, you join the dwellers of Hideaway around the, a large wooden model of Temtum placed in the festival square. Some people exchange uh, shrugs. Others twiddle their thumbs politely. Eventually, the implied investigator appears on a balcony overlooking the square. He shouts a hello. The dwellers wince, but maintain their customary smiles. Why do they- why are they so silent and all that? It's not like it's a nook where everything's underwater. I don't know. Uh, and even in nook, I'm fairly certain they could speak. Uh, because of the weird pro- uh, but anyways. Hide away, he shouts, is doomed. This is a biological fact. Boo, you're in the nair. Biological facts are more suggestions than actual rules. Not to mention, you have not even done... You've not even done any experiments to determine the, the case. You haven't tested your theory. You just created one based on one data point, you dumb bitch. Everyone needs to evacuate before he gives you a nod. You set the model ablaze and it begins to crack apart and fall to ruin. The dwellers scream. Ah. <laughs> And now you're just fear-mongering rather than actually try to convince anyone. The sprightly visionary turns his back on the spectacle and walks away. He taps a few cable men on the shoulder. They follow him. The rest of the people of Hideaway stands idly, stand idly by, watching the wooden city crack and burn. Let's see, the dwellers don't want to acknowledge the truth. They don't know what the truth is. They don't, it's not that they don't want to acknowledge it like they know it's true, but they don't want to... <laughs> Acknowledge it, but it's just that they aren't convinced, you dumb bitch. The truth will be fought over this, during the silent reel. The dwellers of the hideaway are well aware of the truth of the situation, aren't they? I don't know. I'm not aware of the truth of their situation. 
Alright. You've heard a rumor from your crew. The investigator and his f followers will pl uh, will play break the silence of the silent reel. What does that mean? They will sing songs about the doomed city. The work never stops, and the nightly festivals continue, but the Twilight's gesture of communication has become sharper, more abrupt. Their faces are contorted with tension. And now he's just he's trying to win... He's trying to win... He's not trying to win hearts and minds, he's just trying to win hearts! He's not actually trying to convince anyone, he's just trying to make them go, al uh, go along with it with emotional appeals. This is not... This is not science or... Investigative, this is just... He's not, yeah, he's not an investigator. He's just an ideologue. You know what? Fuck this guy. Let's see. By the investigator with a full orchestra, styling the investigator's intrusive band. The sprightly visionary has collected a group of people willing to act against the investigator. In join them. Sure, why not? Burning through my fuel worryingly quickly, but all right. I cannot abide this nonsense. The visionary's maps of the city are pinned to the wall behind him. Instead of planning the city's electrical grid, they now present lines of battle. And he could have just settled this in reasonable debate, but the inve damn investigator had to turn this into a fucking war. Turn the city into a war zone over the truth, as he sees it from one data point without any actual scientific investigation. I have scientific testing. No rigor or anything. Anyways. The, the visionary, wearing the tattered patch of a white and gold fish over his heart, d details his plan of attack to you and your brigade. Your group surrounds the investigator's band, then attacks. The skins of makeshift drums are kicked in. A violin is shattered against a wall. A trumpeter... F a trumpeter flees with their rusty instrument, but are cornered in an alley. Is trumpeter plural? I feel like that should be plural. Uh, once the scuffle is over, the silent reel continues in perfect quiet. The investigator is stopped, for, at least for tonight. Uh. All right. Fellows are maintaining their belief that all's well. As far as I know, it very well might be. Heh, 39. Alright. Uh, you've heard a rumor from your crew. The visionary has set a patrol around the suggester. Apparently, the investigator is attempting to entreat the suggester to speak the truth of Hideaway, whatever that means. Alright. Let the people have their festival. They've never needed to reflect on the positives more. First, the investigator's followers come disguised as friends of the suggester. Stern, but still polite, gestures are enough to deter them. When the investigator's compatriots later return in force, more physical means are acquired. They're sent away bloodied. <laughs> Jesus. Were they planning on coercing the suggester by force? Anyways, the festival proceeds like all others before it. The suggestion is that the people should reflect on Temtem's friendship. The offerings are intensely thoughtful. The explanations of the offerings are unusually long. The slow blinking vendor performs the sign of togetherness over and over again, until she's shaking with tears and must be led away. Yeah. Temtem's friendship. Like like he said, uh, like the investigator said, it has been ref refusing to to cast off the shell this long, and, and all that. Clearly, Temtem really cares about this city on its back. Unless this is just some peak of, uh, uh, some strange peak of random, whatever. So yeah. They're, I guess they're right to be grateful for Tem Tum's friendship. Not everyone would allow a city to be built on its back, and not only allow it, but uh, facilitate it by fighting by fighting back against biology and winning. <laughs> That's something worth praising, not abandoning, based on based off spurious claims of doomsaying. Oh, well. 
Now for Hearts and Minds, the rainbowing. Thanks to the efforts of the sprightly visionary, the upcoming rainbowing festival will be an unparalleled spectacle of color. Unless the investigator can destroy the visionary's kaleidoscopic lights. What the fuck? Well, I guess that's... I guess we did destroy his instruments, so I guess that's not entirely... Uh, unwarranted, but whatever. Alright. Guard the sprightly visionary's headquarters. He's arranged to control the city's lights from a central location. Ensure no one gets it. With hunting trophies, apparently. Whatever. <laughs> I don't pretend to understand it. Though so weapons are banned throughout Hideaway, the teeth and spines you provide ensure the battle, battle is bloody. After being sent away from the alternator, the remnants of an, the investigator's group converge on a building behind an iron gate. Their bodies are bruised and they are bleeding. It's, it is easy to repel them, and many of the visionary's forces enjoy the sport of beating the, fe the fellow dwellers. It is also a distraction, the investigator is attempting to scale the building. You pull him away from the window. He only stares at you as the lights begin to cycle through their colors like a kaleidoscope. But then there is a rumbling, screaming from the festival square. Everyone runs to the violence. Even the visionary leaves his center and waves you to follow him. All of Hideaway is gathered in the festival square around tables of godly colored food. A hair then crack runs through the ground, where one never was before. He st joined this friendly visionary. He stands on a raised platform at the center of the crowd. He gestures for you to join him. The dwellers of Hideaway have come together around the visionary. Some are shocked enough to have broken into speech, but all fall silent when he raises his hands. He performs the wide-armed, toe-twirl sign for Hideaway, followed by the clawed hands and sidesteps for Temtum. He describes togetherness of Temtum and Hideaway, but also of Hideaway and its people. When the visionary rallies the people to return to work, to maintain their home, the one place they love, that loves them, they leave subdued. Only in the investigator remains pale-faced. That is a beautiful thing, to be residing on a, uh, to be riding on a city built on the back of a living creature that genuinely cares for you. It will be a terrible thing to go to, to go to seed just based off mi disaster that might happen in the future. I don't want to have to go through all this crap, investigator. I mean, I certainly am not remiss about about screwing you over, but just in general, really. But you left me no choice. You, you wouldn't even. You didn't even let me. Or uh, the the game. Well, the game didn't give me any choice. The, I would have preferred to just debate it and have it actually, you know, established. Figure out if it's actually true or not. Debate whether debate on his course of action, but he would. The game wouldn't let me, so I choose to. Uh, I choose to interpret that as him not, as him refusing to listen to me, refusing to listen to reason. Ah oh, well, good riddance to bad rubbish. The the sprightly visionary stands by the implied investigator. The visionary passes you a note. I have a request for you. Will you accept? The investigator only stands sullenly at his side. As long as it's not a request for me to kill the investigator again. That would be a bit daft. <laughs> Especially now. The sprightly visionary presents you a letter. Unmask the governor of wisdom. Tell him his captain orders him to hide away. Say I swear by Lady Mi Miriam the consequences will be morbid if duty's neglected. He then performs the bow of gracious thanks and departs. Once he's gone, the investigator whispers. I'll ask my questions of the salt lions. I don't care. Just get me out of here. All right, the salt lions and wisdom. At least Temtem will not be alone. Let's see. Has the uh thing? Has the shop changed? Nope. All right. Alright, 
Who is done that? Oh, buy a memento from the slow blinking vendor. This is different. Oh, she's still selling her, selling her wares. She passes you a chain of small human figures, cut from ribbon and stitched together by sharp spines. They're dyed the colors of a surface rainbow. Her eyes linger on the figures. Her smile fails. She tries to hum, but the tune dies in her throat. She only stares ahead in silence. Okay. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, it's time to go to Wisdom. Alright, that. Okay, then. We just barely scraped five. Actually, it wouldn't have mattered since we're already, we already did repair the hole a bit. I don't need to, but you know. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Uh, I was a bit too close for comfort. On, hit him! There we go. Engine makes careful piloting a bit that was difficult. Alright. Alright. Unmask the governor and present the summons to hide away. The governor is a ferocious, feared man. Do you dare honor the sprightly visionary's request? Well, come this far. When you pass through the last gate of brass and iron, the governor does not welcome you. He only sits, unmoving. You approach, he raises a hand. You leap to his desk and rip off his mask. Hello, you've seen his scarred face elsewhere. Polydream has a high bounty on his head, after he captured their vessels long ago, and led them to their doom in some forgotten escapade. The governor roars and pulls a pistol from beneath his desk. Before he can fire, you relate the sprightly visionary's orders. He stands, knocking over his high-backed chair. I will begin gathering my men at once. Alright. Let's get back to, uh... There we go. Uh... What? Huh. Wait. Oh no. Did I screw something up? Okay, I think I might have screwed something up. Hang on. Let me just do a bit of cheeky save editing real quick. I think I see where I went wrong. There we go. Inform the sprightly visionary that the Seven Against Nidah have returned. You recognize him from... yeah, all that. He grins wickedly and squeezes your arm. Then he begins scribbling in his notebook. Have been waiting, he writes. Tell Miriam I've not been idle. The Seven have found their fleet captain. The first of the Seven. Which is probably more or less what I'm going to call this episode. Actually no, probably the first of the Seven. Uh, colon. Arik. That's how I'm going to be na naming these, like, episodes. I'm going to have, like, seven of them, each one titled, like, the first of the seven, or the second of the seven, or what have you. Ending with, of course, have the final video, well, instead, instead of being something like the seventh of the seven, which just sounds silly, it'll be the seven anew, or something like that. Each video will be one of the seven. Even, uh, no matter how long or short the resulting video ends up being. Next up, uh, Eigel, I guess? Probably someone in Eigel. I don't think there's anyone over at uh, Gant Pole, unless the, uh, that, uh, Paraspex was one. But, but probably Eigel. I don't, have I even been to Eigel? I don't know. Well, we'll go there now. That'll be probably the second of the seven, then maybe swing by whatever this is, then Nook, then Rack, maybe Rack, then Nook. I don't know, either way. But yeah, so today we got another one of the seven, and we stopped a, 
fucking sophist investigator from screwing up hideaway because uh, on vague uh, suspicions that it might at some point in the future go to shit based, based on not much of anything really aside from well biology but biology is it, this is the nath again biology need not apply it's held on this long i don't see why it shouldn't hold on for longer and apparently our uh, apparently Arik is doing something here that <laughs> that involves it something related to the seven so frankly even if it does go uh go tits up still still almost certainly going to be worth it especially if it happens after we liberate immortality, because even if it, it does, it, you know, go tits up, they'll still survive because they're going to be immortal, you know? <laughs> Probably did the right thing here. Frankly, it, even if we didn't, it was worth it to piss off that annoying investigator. And hey, at least we didn't murder him in his sleep, which we very well could have. Anyways, until next time, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers.